Oh, hello, 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 my cross stitch friends. Welcome to my floss tube channel where we celebrate all things counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, and making all the things. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're returning, I am so happy you came back to visit with me today. One amazing commenter said last week they come for the pugs and they stay for the cross stitch. So I am so excited that you are all here with me. My pug here, he is very excited to go outside and he wants to go outside, not to go potty, but to eat the tomatoes from the garden. And not the red tomatoes, the ripe tomatoes. No, he wants the green tomatoes, the ones that are <laughs> it's the end of the growing season. And he's like, let me out. We're having a really fun game. It's called Who Ate It? The Groundhog or the Pugs? <laughs> so we are in the midst of that. And he's like, mommy, please. So here we are. I, he's up on his perch. I am ready to talk about cross stitch this week. And as promised, I'm also going to be talking about me making all the things. I have some craft projects to show you that I completed. I did some needle felting. I did some hot gluing. I did some sewing and of course, cross stitch. So let's get started. Yay. <laughs> Once again, my name is Amanda May. And I am the lead designer of artithdesign.com. I've got some designs in Just Cross Stitch Magazine. I've been doing my floss tube now. I'm over 100 episodes. Thank you all so much. I think I have learned and grown a lot through it. And you will see my progression of my hair. I have grown literally <laughs> throughout this experience. I want to thank all of you for your kind words about my No New Worlds pattern and for the advocacy of stitching and honoring Indigenous peoples of the Americas. Now, I want to say, if you are stitching the Mayflower stitching, that's awesome. Good for you. I have no qualms or quarrels about that. My goal in creating my No New Worlds ornament was to add a counterpoint to the counted cross stitch community right now and honor indigenous peoples of the Americas. And woo, a jack o' lantern's down and indigenous peoples, well, throughout. <laughs> so uh, I better show this now and set them down. I am an inadvertent collector of jack o' lanterns. I think they are a wonderful Halloween fall accessory. They're pretty inexpensive, they're light to store. And I like all their cute little faces. So that's a fun fact about Amanda May. I like <laughs> plastic blow mold stuff. All right, let's talk cross stitch, shall we? Yes, we shall. I worked a little bit on my Northwest series, the bear that lives here. This is a trio of patterns put out by Classic Cross Stitch Magazine, 1991. The three patterns are by Ursula Michaels. And thank you to Kim who sent me the, the Orca pattern that I would like to stitch. I just need those blues to work on the Orca. I have decided I'm not going to do the Eagle, but it is sure lovely. I <laughs> This is what Kim sent me and someone said they were gonna, woo, pugs. Sorry, there was a drop down there. Uh, that they like the begonias and are gonna stitch those. That, don't discount classic cross stitch or vintage cross stitch. So here we go. The bear lives here, the totem. I got a little bit more done on it. I had originally picked some pretty bright colors, like bright, bright, bright. And I started doing this, the sun, and it, I had it, it was, I had it for the pink. And I was like, no, the sun rays are not going to be pink. I mean, I love a pink sky, of course, pink skies, but I wanted the rays to be different. So, you know it, you love it. Gentle Art Fragrant Cloves came out the clear winner for the orange variegation for the sun rays there. I'm going to continue up here with the pink uh, instead of the orange, but the further down here, I will transfer over to the Gentle Art Fragrant Cloves. I should have done orange all along, but I, for some reason, I thought, well, I'll do pink. What's wrong with pink? Hindsight. <laughs> 
All right, so I am really excited about that. Again, I, I will start the orcas once I get the blue and I'm, I couldn't be happier. That's so exciting. And I got a pug who is so excited over here. Are you doing your little wiggle? We've been talking these little butt wiggles, little butt wiggles. <laughs> We've been saying those uncontrollable butt wiggles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. The next stitch I've been working on is a part, but in my heart, the ex ghoul friend double feature here. I haven't decided to do the portrait yet, but I am working on the hand. So this one has been really super fun because it's just straight stitching. And so this is with the, the Gloriana 12 weight cotton. So I am, you can really see the variegation in that. The red is the grungy red from Old Tattered Flag. And that the green, the Gloriana, these are pricey. Like I was kind of surprised at how pricey these are. She's like ro rolling around. These, I think I paid $6 for this. Um, mostly p punch needle artists use this. I grabbed it and I said color fast 12 and I thought, well, look at that beautiful green. I think that would make a beautiful zombie hand. So here we go. It's on a 32 count and I really do like the variegation. I mean, but you can really see that I'm stitching across and not diagonally or anything. You can see my rows of stitching and that's okay. So I am hoping to get a little bit more done on that. And then the third and final cross stitch project that I worked on this week, I couldn't help myself. I couldn't start it soon enough. I pulled out my copy of the Barbara Lavalli kit hugs of the mother daughter uh, hugging with a little with a little doll, or it could be grandmother and daughter, or you know non binary individual or two spirit person. So. I just love it so much. The kit came with the 14 count Ada and all the flosses. I opted not to do the 14 count Ada, not because it's not great. I love a good 14 count Ada, but I looked at the chart and saw that there's a lot of partial stitches or fractional stitches. So doing one over one or partial stitches or fractional stitches. I mean, you can totally do it on Ada. It's just not my favorite. So I opted for doing this on a linen, which, you know, you do you, right? You could do it on even weave. So one of the things about the kits, oh, I have it. I have it in my little Halloween bag. The kit came all numbered with the corresponding color flosses. And it was late at night. And of course, when do I like to start cross stitch projects? I like 10, 15 at night. Why not, right? Yeah, forethought was not there. So I had none of my floss organizers. All I had was the cardboard bobbins. I have been converting my stash, a lot of my bobbin stuff from over to the plastic bobbins that were gifted to me by Allie. Thank you, Allie. But I had these cardboard bobbins. And of course, you know, at 10, 15, 10, 30 at night, it's what I could grab. So I wrote in pencil, I added this, and it's been actually kind of handy in that uh, the, the traditional little thingy, if I'm, I don't have a second hole for my spare floss, I've just been kind of sticking it there. These are the quintessential luggage tag rings. It is Kismet Stitches. Diana turned me on to these last year. They are amazing. I had I got a, a, a set of 36 and I might need to get myself another set because I have been using them for other things besides just organizing floss. So I will say that the kit stuff, all of the, the colors, which are gorgeous, they uh, came in two yard lengths rather than one yard lengths. I don't know if there's an industry standard because I have, I, I am new to cross stitch in a sense that I've only been doing it, you know, for five years or so. And I haven't done a whole lot of cross stitch pre-made kits. So I'm not sure if that is typical for cross stitch kit for the thread to be in a two, um, two yard length or if 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 they're typically in one yard lengths 
But what I did was I took the two yards, I folded it in half to make it one yard. I cut with scissors, cut the length, and then I folded it again and then cut it again because I like to have 18 inch length, which is about if I were to pull my thread, holding it up into my, you know, that, that spot. Anatomy, right? Goodness. All right. <laughs> That's about uh, 18 inches and then fold it in half again and put on the tags here. I don't have any specialty little bling, but I did write what it is for. So I know in case these fall out of my bag, I know what I have because hashtag nothing is safe. I'm losing stuff, the pugs are grabbing it, the kids are grabbing it. You know, it happens. I pulled out my handy dandy little hoop. Uh, this is just a little felt grip hoop, vintage felt grip hoop. It is not a duchess hoop, but it is one of those uh, retro vintage felt. And it, it's so nice. So I, I have been using the hoop for my fractional stitches and it's been very helpful for me. So you will see hoop marks in this. I have been doing a combination of stitching in hand. I'm really, I'm really excited with how this is turning out. Um, the back stitch is really going to make this piece pop. So I have half the face of the adult and the doll. That's about, I've, I've worked maybe nine hours on this project and that's where I'm at after nine hours. That is, um, again, using the hoop and stitching in hand. It's been lovely. I'm really excited about that. And uh, again, here is the chart. If you are interested in winning the chart, I have the chart and it for the giveaway. It you got to go back to last week's episode and follow the directions to be entered in. And then the next week, I will be <laughs> I'll be drawing a winner for this. So not this week. And the reason I'm not doing it this week is I am filming early this week. And I wanted to give everyone ample time who were interested in entering the contest. So I want to also thank the Quilted Raven in Anchorage, Alaska. It's a little quilt shop for sponsoring the giveaway. I reached out to them. I placed, I've placed two orders with the shop. I reached out to them. I just said, you know, Gianna, I love your shop. I love it so much. Can I, you know, I love it. <laughs> she sent the kits. So one for me and one for one of my viewers. So thank you again. And I have a bunch of stuff from the Quilted Raven to show you because my Happy Meal came in this week and I'm so excited. And look, they're using the little perch I put. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay. Those are my cross stitch finish, my cross stitch projects for the week. I have not started any dark October stitching, but I have plans to start. Well, I guess, I guess you could put ex-girlfriends as, as dark October stitching. Yeah. Ah, forgive me. Okay. Let's talk about crafty, creative things I did this week. I worked on my wreath. This wreath is... <laughs> my glue gun was out. I burned my fingertips a couple times. I worked on the Tallulah wreath here. It is a craft kit. It's the brand new kit by Annie's. And it's the Farmhouse Style Craft Kit Club. And so that's the wreath. So that's what they're offering right now. And so I made it. Uh, and they sent it to me to review. So I wrote a blog post about it and I'll have the blog post linked below. If you are interested in the craft kit stuff, I have a link uh, again for that below. Oh, can we see these cute little, oh, I moved the pillow. There we go. Gotta have those cute little pugs. Okay. And <laughs> so I worked on this and the leaves in the rows, there's a, a lot of leaves, not 100 leaves, not 150 leaves. There's a lot of leaves. <laughs> so I, I glued all of that. But wait, there's more because hashtag make all the things. I had to make 
my felted pumpkins. And I'm so excited about these. All right. These came from the Annie's Creative Woman Club Kit, Kit of the Month Club. But you don't have to be a lady to enjoy some, some wool felting. <laughs> so I have successfully completed a wool felt project. What is so funny is uh, you, I started this story last year on Floss Tube, and I don't know <laughs> if anybody remembers it, but in college, I have, I had a really awesome friend. Her name is Johanna. She also like, you know, making all the things. And we lived in the dorms together uh, the first year of college and then continued to stay friends after that. Well, <laughs> we were always like making weird stuff. Like one year we had um, a, a themed party and we made a huge paper mache elephant all the things. So she was really into needle felting. She ended up actually needle felting her bouquet of flowers when she got married a couple years ago. So anyway, she's all into needle felting and I tried to needle felt with her, but I have, or I did have a sensitivity to wool. So I'm pulling the wool roving and like a single piece got into my eye and I had been touching the wool, right? So then I had those stuff all on my fingers and then I'm trying to get it out of my eye and my eye swelled up and I anyway I <laughs> got that single piece out and I vowed this was like 15 years ago I said I'm never will trying to wool felt again and I, I said that right and then last year I go to the Maryland sheep and wool festival <laughs> you know wool roving everywhere I I was okay I was safe and then I said last week that I the craft kit stuff that I was gonna have my kids help me with this and help me with the needle felting nope I did it I did it I did it they did help me wind the yarn but then all the actual needle felting stuff I did myself I didn't have a reaction I didn't get anything in my eyes I'm so excited so I've officially made my first set of pumpkins I I love pumpkins I kind of, I want to make a little blue pumpkin and the pumpkin patches, there's pumpkin, I'm in the agricultural area of Maryland and I want to go out and get a pumpkin or something. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So there we go. And I also, I uh, reviewed this and that's on the blog as well. If you're interested and I have the links too, if you're interested in the creative woman kit of the month club, <laughs> they all, they have a bunch of different ones like for kids and woodworkers and all co all stuff. So those are the crafty things I did this week. And then I was going through because you know, I haven't started enough projects. I haven't stitched enough projects. I was going through and organizing a lot of my charts and I pulled this this magazine out. Karen, she is also a designer from KEB Designs. She sent this to me for as happy mail like a year and a half ago or so. She also stitched me that it's you I like. So, so great. So I was just thumbing through the older magazines and sure enough, there is an article about Alaska stitchers in this magazine. And there's a, uh, a little child stitch in this. And oh, I look at these otters. The, uh, the sea otter is, these sea otters are not in this magazine, but I'm going to, I was, I thought I would research her. That's her name of research. And it's in the cross stitcher magazine of 1985. So Karen, look at that. <laughs> All right. I have more stuff to show you. I do. It's like overflowing over here. Last week. I had to go to the doctor. I did. So I had to venture out off my property. I, I had to go. And so I went to the doctor and I said, okay, after the doctor, I have to go to a thrift store. So I looked up and there was a thrift store open. Y'all, I have not been to a thrift store since end of January. It is October. So I went to a thrift store and to say that, oh, it's just the bubbies. It's just, it's just, 
it's it's just it's just a boy uh-uh it's just a boy it's okay it's okay it's okay to say I kind of went a little wackadoodle I went a little um I don't know the the correct term um what are those those little spinner tops? They just spin and they kind of like wobble. I look like one of those. <laughs> kind of all around the store. And I checked the 75% off bin. And that's usually the last chance bin on of a thrift store. If, uh, you know, it, they, thrift stores can only carry stuff so long before they throw it away or what have you you know, 90% of it just gets thrown away. So I felt like it was, I, I had to, I had to save this piece. You know, I had to do it. So here we go. <laughs> My first save the stitches since early this year. Let me see if I can show it to you. It is a vintage lace, like a mixed media. There's lace and ribbon and then there's some embroidered they look like colonial knots or uh, ribbon embroidery and the lace and it's on paper so mixed media the frame is like a I don't know something they, they put over the wood and it's coming apart and then the old rusty nails I don't know the date of this piece but I got it I ha it had to come home with me. I couldn't help myself. Where am I going to put it? I have no idea. Who made it? I don't know. Do I love it? Yes. If anybody knows the technical term for this, the mixed media where it's the paper art with the ribbon, if it's considered ribbon embroidery or uh, I'm not a ribbon art, I would love to know the technical term for that. And she's so pretty and her like, you little bobbin. Uh, bobbin. Bonnet bonnet so there is my save the stitches and of course I went through the craft aisle and I'm going to show you I have a bunch of cross stitch stuff to show you they're all patterns and stuff all of them are they're not original they're not new they're original patterns but they're not new you know new releases or anything I appreciate I've uh, heard from a couple stitchers that you really enjoy seeing it when I pull out some of the older magazines and older patterns from my collection that I have acquired because it's not just about the new designs which of course I please support your needlework designers <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying don't spend your money on new designs but I what I am saying is that don't discount the older designs you can always change up your color palette do a floss toss all the things all right so let me show you oh my gosh there's so much here okay first I had heard about Indigo Junction after watching Carol Salt Box Stitcher and I saw this recognized Indigo Junction if I had not watched Carol's floss tube I would have never picked this quilt thing up but we all learn right so I grabbed that and it has some cute little one, cute little, the patterns I liked. There's like a Valentine with like the disembodied head of a cherub with the wings. Cause who doesn't love a disembodied head on your love day? And <laughs> here is a heart stitched sampler. And this is just hand embroidery and some really cute little hand embroidery patterns by Pastime Sandra White. I think this was from 1998 and in case you're wondering she kisses all the time she just wants to lick and kiss can you just hang out like right up here for me that would be awesome thank you all right so I wanted to show you the little the little patriotic angel it's, okay now you're gonna get all on my project bags awesome nothing is safe Okay, let me move some pumpkins. Let me move ribbon embroidery. Okay. Oh, please. <laughs> so much stuff. Okay. You feel good about yourself? Huh? Yeah? Okay. Okay. Oh, 
come for the hugs, stay for the cross stitch. Here we go. Yeah, you guys, you good? By all means, you, you two need to be comfortable. Yep, okay, here we go, pug butt. All right, sit. So there is the Miss 4th of July. Super cute. And then there was like the elf for Christmas. And then where's this one I wanted to show? Oh, I liked this basket. I just thought it was really cute. The, the folk art. So cute. So I need to get into some embroidery. Megan, a wide-eyed stitching child. She is a fellow Maryland cross stitcher and artist extraordinaire. She does a lot of uh, hand embroidery and I want to be like her. <laughs> the next pattern, next one I found uh, is the licensed trademark Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> There's some really cute ones. Uh, baby doll, I don't want to do this right now. Okay. Okay, please stop. Okay, so here is Coca-Cola. I thought it was fun. The next one, I... I, I picked this one because it said Salem Sampler and here is there's the house there's the lady I couldn't tell if this is uh, an outdoor if that's a well like a water well or if that's like an outdoor cooking apparatus I it has a religious it, it has a, a cross up at the top so I'm not sure what that is and I apologize I'm I'm I, that I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know. But there's the basket of fruit, the sampler, the border. So I picked this up. This has been, it's a 1981 Helene Halverson design. Let me see if I can show that. And it's on Somebody actually ha ha stitched the chart. It's on the big piece of paper, but it's been folded so much that it's uh, coming apart. I'm holding it up uh, uh, backwards, but it's 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 all coming apart and someone customized the chart on the inside and there's writing, but I still thought it was really cool. I don't know if this is like a hard to find pattern, if somebody's like, oh my gosh, I wanna stitch it. So I'm thinking, I, I, I grabbed it because I cannot help myself. I can't. I have I have a problem. And the problem is cross stitch. It's not even a problem. Okay. Let freedom ring. I grabbed this. This is uh, also kind of classic Americana booklet 92. There's like the little, little puppy and the baseball bat the children in the wagon, the the kids like walking, there's a church in the background, kids walking like maybe to the parade. And I grabbed this because I always appreciate classic, some of the, the cross stitch stuff where it, you, it's on black Ada. Y'all know that I was gifted by Nancy, thank you Nancy, some 14 count black Ada. So I can't say that I have a lack of projects to stitch. I really, I liked the Statue of Liberty here. I liked, if you look closely, the, it's stitched in tent stitch or the half stitch it, um, just the, and it gives it that dimension of the shadow in the, the foreground and then the full statue there in full cross. So I, I really liked the layered nature of that. So I, I grabbed that. I don't think, I, I'm not in the mood to stitch any of them, but I, I have it now, just in case. I grabbed the old samplers chart for this bird right here. Uh, I really liked the bird border around that blue sampler. Again, I know some people are doing red sampler walls. <clears throat> 
Hearts Shameless Plug and Blue Samplers. So I wanted to show the blue sampler here. I also really liked this one for the horse. The horses right here. I thought that was really sweet. So this is Leisure Arts Leaflet 954. And it's called Old Samplers. Aging instructions for those who love old samplers but do not care to pay the price for authentic antiques. That is literally the title of this. <laughs> the next piece I got is American Heirlooms. It's another sampler book. It is it doesn't have a date on the thing, so I'll have to look through it. it it's it got like the traditional samplers. It's got the, the Pennsylvania Fractor birth sampler here. Marriage, silhouettes. So I thought that was really cute. Let me see if I can give you more information. Um, America 1980, and it's by the Heirloom Shop. And out of Mississippi 1981 so there we go I really can't help myself if I see a prairie schooler I grab it because I love prairie schooler I believe I already have this one in my collection but this is dated 1985 it's the original cardstock I grabbed it it is the Amish sampler Sunshine and Shadow. There's other American print, but a bunch of other, you know, obviously very prolific. I pulled out, I grabbed these, the Sandra Sullivan, the Homespun Elegance. She is still designing. She is just go, go, going. I really liked this one. It is a harvest, like harvest sampler but I really like, where is it? I like how the harvest basket there is on the dark fabric right here, just that motif, or you could do the full sampler. So that is really cool. Uh, I don't know if this is out of print, if she has it in her online shop, but it's number 116. Be You Thankful Band Sampler. And then also by Sandra Sullivan, I, I believe I have this one already in my collection, but who doesn't love a Santa, a celestial moon Santa bell pull? So star bright bell pulls. Puggy pug, what are you doing? You're getting in trouble. Okay, the last, well, second to last, I've, this and one more thing to show you. I wanted to show you the Just Cross Stitch magazine. This one is called the prize winning issue. This is a sampler in this magazine issue from 1987, May, June of 1987. This was a design contest winner. It was picked, uh, designed for the cover of the magazine. Look at that sampler. Gorgeous. So I had to get this magazine just for the samplers because Kitten Stitcher and Carol, they told me so virtually, of course. I don't know them in real life. But I felt like they were telling me that it needed to come with me. So this is another sampler in here. This is a religious sampler, but I grabbed, I liked that the the band the border. <laughs> then also, where did it go? So yeah, the sampler cover contest winner, and so pretty that border. Gorgeous. And then there's a bunch of other obviously traditional 1980s, you know, stitching. <laughs> but the grand prize back in 1987 was $250 and it was sponsored by uh, DMC and Just Cross Stitch. It's 2020 and yep. What's that inflation? <laughs> I wonder how much it would be these days. Anyway, just cross stitch. And then I could not believe it. 
I found this. So now I have two copies. I can't believe it. Look at what I found. Yeah. Merritt sent me her copy that she found at an estate sale. And then the following week, I finally go to the thrift store after not going for 10 months. And I find the copy. So, wow. <laughs> Y'all know I love Christmas. I can't believe it. It had to come home with me. It did. All right. I also got one more thing from the thrift store that I'm going to show you in just a minute. It is, it's holding some goodies. So I got my second package from the Quilted Raven. So I will show you what I got from there. Oh, I forgot. I got, all right. I also stopped because I couldn't help myself. So I finally get out of the house. I go to the doctor. I go to the thrift store. Then I go to the quilt shop. So I do have, I have quilt shop stuff from Patches to show you as well as Quilted Raven because, mm, all right, but I found these at the thrift store. I found little teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny little nine patches. I don't know the story behind them. I don't know who, who stitched them, but I saw them in the little bag and I said, mm, yes, please. So I bought these at the thrift store. I don't know what exactly I'm going to do with them. There's no rhyme or reason to the colors uh, or, but I got the cute little nine patches and then the start of some other nine patches there. Okay. That was thrift store. All right. Now patches quilting. Now, mind you, here I am. I'm like, I'm free. I mean, as free as you can be like masked up and not hugging anyone and explicit directions at the quilt shop. It said no hugging. I got this. I couldn't help it. It is the Santa's workshop. If you can see that. Advent calendar. I got, they had it up. They had the model up. I had to get it for the, I did it for the children. So I have, now I have an advent calendar to make. I think it's so dang cute. I, I love it. It's got um, some of the metallic accents in it. A little owl, the little birds, the elves. It was on sale. So it, I got it for under $10 for the fabric panel. Again, I've never, I've never made an advent uh, calendar Things so I have to, I have to do my research and figure out what I am doing. Oh, by the way, everyone, I am done talking about cross stitch. So if you want to skedaddle, I totally understand and appreciate. I I totally understand. If you want to see what quilting stuff I got, because you can use it for the backing of smalls as well as you know quilt quilt quilting stuff. Then hang on, because I got, I got some goodies. Okay. <laughs> My daughter is like super duper, super duper duper into Huskies, like Siberian Huskies, all the Huskies. YouTube Kids has Husky videos. She wants to watch the Husky documentaries. I'm like Googling free Husky, printing out coloring pages, all the Husky stuff. So when I saw this fabric panel, this was at the Quilted Raven website, quiltedravenalaska.com. Uh, and it's Northern Heritage Design 17551. And by Jody. There's that. So here, it's so pretty. I have to figure out how to, what to do with this. Uh, she wants it like hanging like a poster or like I wanted to hang it like a canvas print, but I don't have, I don't have anything large enough, nor do I have the supplies like to make a custom canvas like frame mounting. I, I wasn't sure if I'm just going to stitch down the edges and then like tack it on the wall for her, but she wants this next to her frozen poster. Children in Frozen. Let it go. Yeah, right. Can't let it go because the song is always in your head. So anyway, I love this so much. It's so beautiful. So I got that fabric panel. But wait, there's more. 
I, this was the second order that I put into her shop. I saw this and they're Christmas, they're Christmas puppies. And I had to get it. So look at these little ones. I haven't shown her this yet. Because I'm afraid if I show it to her right now, she's going to be like, why isn't, why haven't you quilted it yet, mommy? So I'm showing it to you, but shh, don't tell her. It's going to be for Christmas. And then there's <laughs> the husky with a little ball. And oh my gosh, so he is my favorite. I love seeing your dogs. Look at, he looks like he's, he's had some good adventures. He's a gift to his, to his, to his family. So this is going to be made into a Christmas quilt and I could not help myself. This is one of the Alaskan artists. Uh, he made the Silly Huskies quilt blocks that I got. Um, that I'm So I'm making the one Husky quilt and I got more fabric for that. But um, you can see it's, it's on her site under Alaskan artists and I'll, I'll have the link. So at Patches Quilting, I got these coordinates. Um, it's got like the silver. So I got it in blue and white for this. And then uh, from the Quilted Raven, I got the trees. And then I got the coordinating all three of the snowflakes that match the snow the, the snowflake from this. So I'm so I'm so excited. But wait. <laughs> These were the other uh, two snowflakes that I had purchased the first time, so I'm going to add those to the quilt. I then got For the Silly Huskies quilt, my daughter picked these out. She went through the website with me and she picked them out. I originally picked this batik out of the sled, like the Iditarod, the sled. I picked out this colorway. So she's looking on the website with me. Again, she's five, okay? So she's like, you know, mom, I like that one, but I like this one better. So just get me both. So I told her, you know, what I'm going to use it for. So instead of getting one yard of one color, I got a half yard of both colors. And then, so I have that. And then I showed her, they had this Husky fabric. I don't think they have any more of this. This was in their last chance, like their clearance. So I got this and it's the Batik Huskies and that's for the back of the quilt. So I got fabric for that. And then she picked this, I, I loved this one in the rainbow, but she, and then she confirmed and she got it. So here is this Husky print. So, oh my gosh, I love this so much. So I got a yard of this. So I'm hoping all of these Huskies will be enough to add to the blocks that I already started. So I also got... The first time I got this, like the snow blow, the snow, I got these two blues and then these were the silly husky print that it already started out with like kind of the rainbow. So she's going to have husky, husky, husky. So I have to figure out how to, you know, assemble not just a quilt top, but actual, the actual whole quilt. Um, I heard that. I, I don't know in like real life how much it costs to have a quilt like long arm quilted. I was told at the Quilters Guild like a queen size quilt it's $800 minimum for a queen size quilt to be long arm quilted here in Maryland. I don't have that kind of money. 
I don't know if that is a true cost of what it costs to do long arm quilting. So I, but no judgment, you know, I just, I, I can't afford that. So I, I have to learn <laughs> how to do this myself. I watched a really awesome video by um, Mr. Domestic last week, and he did a, a wall basting or, you know, doing the, the, uh, getting, sandwiching your, your quilt together and by pinning it on the wall first and using your vertical space. And then he was talking about the fusible batting. So I bought the crib size, 45 by 60 inch crib size batting by Hobbs, the fusible batting to try myself. I don't know what I'm doing. I have never done this. I'll, all I've ever done is made quilt tops and I make the quilt tops and then I fold them up and I set them down and years later, they're still not done because I am really awesome. Like I am so awesome at starting things and never finishing them. I am. So that's why I'm super excited when I finish my models and frame them. So here's count the saucers, count the cups. When I actually finish some craft projects, I'm like, Yay! speaking of finishing things, I finished, I got the fabric and finished it this weekend. This is the Cindy Shake Alphabet series. I got the panel. She sold the panel. It was like, you know, and then you cut out. And so I immediately got it and started making it. Before I show you the panel, this is the, the last thrift store find I found in the 75% off bin, the clearance at the thrift store was this bowl. Many people, they put the flower frogs and then you can put your scissors through. I clean, I washed it and then I've been using it all weekend to like put my thread and goodies in. So I wanted to show you again, it's, um, I'm going to have a blog post up with all of the artist information and my supply list. Um, but this is by Cindy shake also quilted Raven. I pulled out, I bought a, a sewing box filled with stuff because why not? Because I can't help myself. So I had, uh, four packages of this wide bias tape in Yale, Yale blue, Yale, like the university Yale blue dated, uh, 1983. So I opened up three of the packages to make this banner. And then I will have this, I just, I'll just go over really fast what I did. So I used the rainbow, another rainbow, the Polystar 30 weight metallic thread by Sulky. I used this color and this, and I just grabbed coordinating stuff out of that vintage box again that I had. So I just got like the polyester and then look, at <laughs> I love the old spools. So the, uh, the thread smells fine and it's not rotted, you know, no, no dry rotted. I, a lot of times vintage sewing supplies, you have to be mindful that your thread might not actually work. Right. So I, I put the blue and the yellow on bobbins. So I have the polyester thread in, loaded in my bobbin. And then I load these on top of your machine, just like you would thread normally. So that is how I made the, the, the stitching around all of the banners. There's gold around. And then I did like a fancy, not fancy, my, my machine, it's just, uh, you know, $60 machine. So it just had this little stitch thing. So I, what I did is I cut them all out. I had this kind of tan fabric in my stash. I don't know who made it, what I, it was a thrift store fabric that I got. You know, it's like one of those random things. Like, when am I ever going to use this weird colored? Well, now, now is the time. So here, here is the banner. And I, so I, I made all of it. So here's A, B. So A, B, C for caribou, B for bear, A for antler, D, I believe that's for Denali the mountain, E for eagle, F for fox, G is for goose, 
H for Husky. That's my daughter's favorite, the Husky. I've got, I've got a couple of favorites in here. I'll show you when I get there. I, I believe it's for ice fishing. I for ice fishing. J for, uh, J, J-A-Y, like the, the blue J. K, I thought, I thought that was crustacean. L, lark, bird, the lark. M for moose. N, this is one of my favorites. N is for narwhal and northern lights. And then we have O for otter, which is also my favorite. And P for puffin, because I love puffins. I love them. I do. O for the, or Q, the, one of the, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that one is. R for raven. S is for salmon. T is for time. Like, um, he's got, he's wearing a clock. A, a clock. He's wearing a clock. He's wearing a watch. U is for urchin, like sea urchins. V, I, I believe with the mice, it's vermin. W is for walrus. X, and look at it, he's got, he, the, he's x-ray. He's getting his x-ray. Y is for yarn. And Z. So I'm so excited. I have this all done. And I am going to put it up in our little classroom space. So there we go. That's everything that I worked on this week. I worked on a banner. I, I left my home. I made stuff. Oh, and then because I wanted to test making a banner. So I just, I, I grabbed some of the, the things. And I thought I would hand paint. And then may, uh, do something. And I, so I put enough to do Y-O-U for you space. M-A-T-T-E-R for you matter. It's that time to remind all of you that you matter, that your stitching matters, whatever form that comes in, cross stitch, crochet, knitting, needle felting, needle arts, quilting, hot gluing. You matter. Your crafting matters. Your stitching matters. I appreciate you. <laughs> I appreciate you so much. Thank you for joining me. I would love it if you have not already. I would love it if you would subscribe. Hit the like button. Leave a chat. Say hi. Uh, I'm doing my best to answer as quickly as possible. If you would like to support my channel, you can always click on one of my affiliate links. Follow me on my blog. Purchase a pattern. But, but there's no pressure, okay? Please know that I love you and I appreciate you. No strings attached. Until next week, happy stitching.